International Society of Nephrology Social Media Team member. And it is my proud privilege and honor to interview Professor Carmen Avila Casado as a part of the pre-Congress uh, WCN 2022 pre-Congress interviews. Professor Carmen Avila actually had an initial training in Mexico City. After that, she had a three-year clinical and research renal pathology fellowship at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, Harvard University. Then she came back and did a PhD in the University of Mexico at uh, models of collapsing glomerulopathy. She was the chair of pathology at the National Cardiology Institute in Mexico City for 12 years. Now she is currently the professor of pathology at the University of Toronto, director of education, director of the electron microscopy lab, She's also the renal pathology program director, and she's a staff renal pathologist at Toronto General Hospital, University Health Network, Toronto. She had held many positions. She was the secretary, treasurer, and the president of Mexican Institute of Research in Nephrology. She has been involved in many activities of International Society of Nephrology, International Pediatric Nephrology Association, American Society of Nephrology. She has been a member of ISN Go, which was in our time called ISN Comgan Committee, involved in spreading nephrology education the world over. She is currently the secretary of the Renal Pathology Society and also an educational ambassador of International Society of Nephrology focused with Latin American countries. Welcome, Professor Carmen Avila. Uh, this, it is my pleasure to have the pleasure to be interviewed by, by you and, uh, and also to share something with the community today. Thank you for the interview. Welcome to my office. <laughs> Professor Carmen, what, uh, what was the reason or the inspiration for you to take pathology and renal pathology in particular? Okay, you know, since I was in medical school, I always have the interest, in, I was, was interested in doing pathology. And it's, it's interesting because many people think pathology is far from the clinical. You don't feel like you're a doctor if you're a pathologist. But in reality, you know, pathology is in the middle between clinical and physiopathological processes. So I always have the, this curiosity for physiopathological processes and also how they affect the I mean, the human body, the human systems, and especially in pathology. And, and I loved uh, the renal part because when you are a renal pathologist, you are uh, not only looking at, at a process that is there and, and in, in a way that is static, but you have to put together all the clinical information from the patients and all the findings you see in, in the pathology section at the same time. So. It makes you to, to, to perform all the time uh, this exercise of, of uh, looking at knowing enough physiopathology to put this in the context and try to come out with a diagnosis that is the most accurate in the way that the physicians can help the patients and is be treated in the right way. So I love being a, a, a renal pathologist and I, I, I will not be here if not for the International Society of Nephrology that allow me to fulfill my dream of being a renal pathologist. I was a previous fellow at the ISN and I always try to uh, motivate people that if they have the, a dream to do something outside. I mean, the ISN is a, a great resource. I'm in depth with the ISN and I will try always to work for the ISN for that in that way to, with all my gratitude, yeah. Professor Carmen, can you tell, tell us about your current projects? My projects today, nowadays are in education and in basic research. Regarding education, I am uh, the deputy chair of the ISN Regional Pathology Working Group. So I have in mind to continuous education in renal pathology for nephrologists all over the world or and to educate pathologists or people that is reading renal biopsies all around the world to know about what are the deficiencies, what they're looking for, what are, we can help in, in, in terms of providing courses, providing all the, uh, 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 what is available in our hands in, our, in order to enhance the renal pathology and to, to take excellence in renal pathology. 
to nephrologists and pathologists all over the world. So my, my projects are based in now in education. And in the other part, in the basic science, I, I work in, in the podocyte. I, I love this area. I've been, I did my PhD in podocytes and in and a, a immunological a injury to the glomeruli. So I keep working on that. I'm producing with my, I have a colleagues that I work uh, with in, in the United States. So I keep doing my basic research as well as the clinical practice. So my, my focus now in education and this part of research. Yeah. is on February 24th on digital pathology applications in clinical renal biopsy practice. Can you just tell us about your session and a little bit about digital pathology and what is ISN doing about digital pathology for all the low resource countries? Yes, I mean, this uh, course that we in the, this year is a pre uh, pre course uh, is a very important and very we we put all our effort together trying to update the real pathology information to nephrologists and pathologists. So it, I really recommend to attend to this to this course. The course is on demand, so you can see the uh, yeah. the course anytime. And it will be out, I think, since uh, February 21st. So people have enough time to review carefully all the presentations. And on a, a, we have a Q, Q question and answer sessions on the 24. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we well, we expect is to have the, all, all the comments and questions from the from the people that we can participate. The course has two parts. One is the when we are going to talk about tech, technicalities, about how we can improve our performance. And, and especially I'm talking about digital pathology. This is a new tool that we can use to share uh, images, to, to get the information from experts that are, are in other parts of the world. And it's very important to, that, uh, that we take we can take in mind this, this tool for the future. I think it's a tool. The, the, the pathology is going to move as everything is evolving. Is is, is pathology is going to move to more digital in the future? So this is we are now in the transition, and we need to learn about that. So I work, I hope people attend to my, my my talk in digital pathology, and I will be happy to to have any questions and the question and answers. We will have also a CPC with is very interesting cases presented by pathologists, renal pathologists from different parts of the world. So it will be also nice to, to attend and learn from different from different countries. So I will be very happy if everyone can attend. People will have access also to the to the scan images, so they can go and look at the image and uh, make their own diagnosis and put it together with what we are discussing. It will be great. Yeah. In in your opinion, what do you think are the greatest advantages and digital disadvantages of digital pathology? I don't think there are disadvantages. I, I, I mean, the, there are only advantages. The, this uh, tool, I mean, was born like 10, 12 years ago, and it was only embraced for, by, for uh, research. People didn't trust it for, for clinical. So what, what's the, uh, the challenge in the clinical part is that I, I don't see there's a challenge between seeing a biopsy in the computer or in the microscope. I, I, and I think it's even better if you look at it in the com in the computer because you see higher magnification. The problem is that if you don't process this biopsy properly, then the this computer is going to magnify all the artifacts that are in the tissue. You can make a mistake, right? Sections are very thick, not very well stained, or the, the tissue was not processed properly. So we need to start having this big step on, on having a perfect histology before moving to digital pathology. I think this is the challenge, yeah, but there are no limitations. I you know we, as a clinician, we travel our pathologists a lot. In fact, my office has a microscope because my professor used to harass us with the pathology slides to make diagnosis and interpretation. What is your message for clinicians? What do you expect us to do when to see that this interaction between a renal clinician and a renal pathologist is much more fruitful for oh, yes. the patients. Oh yes, I think we need, I mean, 
we are working as a team. I mean, the renal pathologist is part of the team of the nephrology group, right? As we have yes. nephrology subspecialization now in different areas, we also have nephrologists that, I mean, they, they are, have a, a lot of skills looking for a renal pass. And in, in general, we, have, we need to have this interaction in order to, have it, to put in the context all the clinical information and to have a, the most accurate diagnosis. We need to have this interaction with the nephrologist. The nephrologists also learn. I mean, they take, as you mentioned, you have your microscope. People with the digital images can open the, the, the image in the, in the screen and discuss the biopsy with the pathologist. I mean, it will be it's, it's great to have this, this uh, background, to have this feedback of clinical information and to put it together with the histologist. So there is no way they they can work separated. So my message to the clinicians is to keep very close to your pathologist and provide all the clinical information possible and to make the, 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 the and work as a team. Uh, last question, I've been troubling you a lot. Will digital pathology sort of break the barriers and will make interaction between pathologists of the resource constrained settings and with your lab? Will it be possible in the future that certain images are online submitted to you and you can help us with the interpretation? This is a kind of fellowship that is a remote fellowship. We are not there. So we are planning as a, as a, a group of the a renal pathology group for the International Society of Neurology to have some kind of coaching in teaching renal pathology especially to groups of people that have some experience in renal pathology, trying to update and or have given more experience and or exposed to different cases using this tool of digital pathology. So of course, it's a, it's a tool we are going to put in, in, in education, our hands-on. And uh, this is something that is in our mind as a project, as a group. Thank you. As a nephrologist who has always been fascinated with pathology, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And thank you for giving us time between your work, busy work schedule. Thank you, Professor Carmen. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Very much appreciated.